Assalamualaikum. Selamat pagi. Good morning, everyone. Okay, all right. I think we are ready to go with our presentations. Hope everyone had their breakfast. Uh, I didn't manage to finish my breakfast. My breakfast is still right next to me. I have the nasi lemak, <laughs> which I didn't manage to finish, but I will yes, finish at 12. 12. Okay, okay, all right. Let's, all right. let's get started. All right. So for today, we are going to focus on the individualized education plan or programs. Okay. So I'm sure that every country has their own specific uh, individual, uh, individualized education plans templates. So I'm not going to interfere that. All right. But I'm going to give you a little bit of ideas of how you might approach this. Okay. In Malaysia, we have what we call as RPI, Rancangan Pendidikan uh, Individu, or, or it's a direct translation for Individualized Education Plan. It was done online. Previously, teachers have to write it manually, but now uh, it's, uh, uh, it's something that you can do it online. So everything's managed online. Okay. All right. So we will just proceed with our housekeeping. So it's just the same housekeeping. Make sure you turn off your phone, okay, or turn on the silent mode. Uh, turn off your mic just to make sure that the presentation runs smoothly, okay. Or else, if everyone turn off, turn on their mic, then I will go a little bit haywire with the sensory overload from all the sound. So make sure turn off your mic, okay. Study time is 50 minutes times two, but sometimes we go over time. So maybe uh, we will study like 55 minutes and just have a break time of uh, 10 minutes. Okay. All right. So to begin with, I will answer your burning questions. Okay. From yesterday, which I didn't manage to address because of the time limit. Okay. So the first question here is from Mr. Zhao. Uh, is when do teachers and doctors cooperate in school for some of the disabled students in Malaysia? Okay, so I believe what you meant here by doctors is medical doctors. Yeah, okay. So actually we have screening programs. Uh, last time we call it outreach programs. Okay, where teachers in school have a list of students who are at risk of having learning difficulties but haven't been diagnosed yet okay all right so the teachers provide the list to the district offices and the district offices will sort of organize a screening program uh, at district level or in certain states they do it at state level okay so the screening program uh, is sort of like a one center one stop center Okay, so these students without diagnosis but uh, are at high risk of having these learning difficulties, they have to attend and come to the screening programs. And in the screening programs, we will have the medical doctors, okay, practitioners, medical practitioners, we have uh, speech pathologists, me, uh, psychologists, sometimes even clinical psychologists, occupational therapists, uh, audiologists, okay, so we will have. The, the child will be assessed by all of these professionals in one day, okay? So they will get the report and then they will proceed with the diagnosis if uh, the child should have the diagnosis, okay? If the child requires further evaluation, then in the report it will say that uh, the child requires further evaluation. So this is the time when teachers and doctors cooperate in schools, yeah, for disabled students. Otherwise, if the child already has a diagnosis, okay, so teachers and doctors might cooperate in school programs, which is organized by the state uh, education departments, or might be from the school itself, like the school organized themselves uh, for to invite doctors to the schools to give talks or whatsoever. As for me, because I am a speech language pathologist who works directly under the Ministry of Education. My responsibility is to visit schools, yeah, to visit schools in Selangor because um, my portfolio is the state of Selangor. Okay, sometimes I also visit uh, states uh, like Labuan and also Putrajaya, yeah, because those states uh, uh, have 
higher number of cases and some of them doesn't have speech pathologists uh, in the Ministry of Education. So that's how we help uh, the, the schools. Okay, so number two, um, Miss Ravi Rose, uh, she asked this, I'm so sorry, you asked this three times yesterday, but I didn't uh, realize that you actually posted the question. So strategy number four for social skills, observe, interpret. So am I going to speak aloud my interpretation so the kid with autism will hear it and follow me or imitate what am I saying? So the answer is yes, definitely, because the idea of observe and interpret is uh, to model to the child what is expected for the child to say when he did that thing. Okay, so previously, if you love to ask questions, like when you see the child is doing something, you ask questions. Now you want to reduce asking questions, but you want to ask, but you want to give more commenting. Okay, so from the commenting, you actually model. So model, you repeat, so the child will be able to associate uh, the word with what he is doing and then he will be able to develop his understanding of the word and then he will be able to generalize the use of the word via repetitions um, of this strategy and you know he will just use the words more readily at various contexts okay number three uh, ASD students hard to join not interested to join any games activities in the classroom yes 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 it is expected since one of their main characteristics is having narrow fixated interests. I'm not saying this, it is from the DSM-5 book. It's from this one, okay? All right. So it's very important for you when you manage ASD, you have to play with their interests. So be mindful of the first strategy that I told you yesterday, use their interests. Okay, you have certain activities planned, but you have to modify a bit to fit their interests. Okay, so for example, you have a physical education activities, running uh, or um, running or something like that. So maybe at the pole where, uh, where you run, uh, like from one place to another, maybe you want to put stickers of SpongeBob or Squidwards. Okay, if the child loves Squidwards or SpongeBob, that little modification might actually work to uh, entice them to join in your activities okay so you have to be mindful of that okay i hope that answers i have one more question actually that's from miss natasha um it's about speech sound disorder we'll see how uh, i might answer that at the end because speech sound disorder is actually an entirely different topic uh, than social skills yeah so children with speech sound disorders might or might not have uh, social skills. So we'll see if we have time, then we'll uh, talk about that. Otherwise, then I will, I will reach Miss Natasha personally. Okay, we just proceed. Okay, uh, I'm well aware that everyone needs um, visual aids, okay, visual help. I realized that during the past two days, uh, a lot of questions in the chat box uh, um, actually uh, about the slides and about the action plan, okay? So I think I might address this by giving this uh, visual aid. It's not a perfect visual aid because it's just written, okay? So the slides will be given by the organizer after this course. I'm not sure exactly if it's directly a day, but I will give it today. To the organizer but maybe it will take some time for the organizer to email all of you because there are 77 of you okay maybe a few days i guess uh, and the outline for your action plan will be given by siamosan okay i think they might attach it together with the slides okay so don't worry okay everything is ready and then you can just enjoy the course and you know if you have any questions later you can ask at the end okay i think that is very clear and we can proceed with this one. Okay, and another one. Uh, a lot of you have been asking about handling parents who are in denial. So I would like to explain this once again to ensure that everyone is on the same boat. Okay, I don't want people to have like one people have this understanding, another people have this understanding, and then we will go haywire with this presentation and the outcome at the end. 
Okay, first, when you handle parents who are in denial, remember your role is a teacher. Okay, so what you can do is to explain the child's difficulties. Okay, so how do you explain the child's difficulties? Is from your uh, observation and your written reports. Okay, and you can use developmental milestones, um, which Puan Yasmin has addressed in the first day of presentation. Okay, you can talk about uh, what is the expected skills for the child's age and what is the child's current functioning age. Okay, all right. And then you can ask the parents about what their expectations are for the child. Okay, is it to, to go to the university, for them to be independent, for them to have work, for them to socialize, so on and so forth. Okay. And the next one is to educate parents. Okay, so therapists use this word psycho educate. Okay, I educate parents on the benefits and the risk. Okay, you can even ask the parents to reflect the benefits and the risk themselves. Okay, so you have explained the child's difficulties. Now let them write themselves. What would be the benefit if you are accepting them to be in the special education system? What would be the risk if they are still in the mainstream system? Okay, so after that, you can give them time and space to reflect. Uh, you have to respect whatever their decision is. And after that, you can leave it to professionals, okay? So for teachers in Malaysia, because you have us from the Pusat Perkhidmatan Pendidikan Khas, uh, who are therapists who directly works under the Ministry of Education, you can call us, you can give a call to us, and we can come to your school to visit and see and look at the child. Of course, if we have time, you know, you have to set appointment first because we handle the whole state. And there's two offices only in, in uh, to, to, uh, to handle the entire state in Selangor. So make sure you make appointments. That would be awesome. Okay. So we will try and see the child first and give direct recommendation to the teachers. Okay. Uh, to give uh, direct Recommendation to the mothers, we cannot do that unless they reach us first, okay? But school can try to set an appointment with the parents, you know, to discuss about the child's development, okay? I hope that's very clear. Make sure you know your line and boundaries, okay? So that, uh, so that you can handle uh, this kind of problems effectively. I think that's very clear. Now we go and proceed with the individualized education plan, all right? Okay, so what is IEP? Some, some people call the IEP as plan, some people say it's program, okay? So this is the definition by the KPM. KPM is Kementerian Pendidikan Malaysia or Ministry of Education Malaysia, yeah? Okay, so the Individual Education Program, IEP, is a written document especially designed for a student. So IEP is also designed for the purpose of documenting all applications and modifications made to uh, the learning programs and services provided, okay? So I'm very sure the IEP in every country is different. So maybe I thought that I want to hear some input from the countries, okay? Malaysia will go at the end. Uh, maybe we'll start first with Timor Leste. Timo Leste, any representative that would like to tell me how you approach the IEP at the moment? Uh, good you morning. Good morning. Yeah. So, Can you introduce yourself? Uh, good morning. Uh, sorry. Um, Jose Montero, Timo Leste. I just, I just opened yep. my computer. Sorry. Hello. Hello, yes, I'm listening. Yeah. yeah. So, could you so please. So, what uh, about IEP in repeat? I, IEP, mm. uh, Individual so Education individual. Program. Mm. Do in you have IEP? Uh, we are at the moment is inclusive, inclusive uh, education. Mm -hmm. And uh, also GPT, uh, uh, ZTP, 
GTP uh, teaching uh, and sorry uh, uh, teacher GTP. Okay. Uh, this is a group teacher training. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, IEP is a perhaps uh, we have we have a not yet maybe. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, do you have a certain curriculum for special education students in your country? Yeah, we, we our curriculum at the moment is uh, the same curriculum. We have a not yet uh, special for students with okay. special needs, but we we use for the general curriculum. I see, I see. So the so curriculum, whatever the, uh, the mainstream student studies, then the special education students will also learn the same thing. Yeah, the same. And then when the curriculum is uh, for use the general, and then when the students in the classroom, and then the teacher are telling special. This is uh, the design curriculum like that. Mm, okay, that's a good yeah. input. Thank you so yeah. much from Timor Leste. Okay, uh, now maybe I would like to hear from the Philippines. So, sorry. The Philippines, thank you. Thank you, Timor Leste. Okay, That's a great okay, input. Thank you. thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, perhaps from the Philippines. Any representative? I would like to know how you approach the IEP eh, in your country. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. May I know your yeah, name? I'm Maria please? Bernadette Albao. Yep. So first we assess the child or the learner, and after the assessment, uh, we design the IEP, and that is the plan that we apply for the rest of the school year. So that will be the lessons of the child uh, during the year that they are enrolled in our school. Hmm. Do you have both IEP and general curriculum for special education students or only IEP? Uh, it depends on the disability of the learner. Like what, okay. we, like what I handle now is the transition class. So mm -hmm. uh, the, our department, uh, has given us the uh, curriculum and then hmm. we modify it following the IEP that we have designed for the learner. Great. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much, yeah. Philippines, Miss Maria. Okay. Now I would like to hear from Thailand. Any representative from Thailand who wants to talk about the curriculum, about the individual education program in their country? Now I'm using the waiting strategy right now to get the response. Okay, perhaps not from Thailand. Maybe you can type it in. Okay, all right. So the rest of you, uh, please type in the chat box. Okay, you can share among you uh, how you approach the IEP. Okay, otherwise maybe you have your own WhatsApp group. You can share how you approach the IEP and the curriculum. So I think that will be great for your action plan later. Okay, so I'll just proceed. Now, we have to think about why we need the IEP. Like for example, in Malaysia, we already have uh, curriculums for special education needs. Yeah, And then teachers on top of that have to do IEP. Okay, individualized education uh, programs or plans. So actually teachers in Malaysia have two. Okay, have two big works to do. All right, so why? It's because every child is heterogeneous. Okay, I used this word yesterday. Heterogeneous means everyone is different. Okay, and secondly is because we have limited access to therapies. 
Okay, so our special education needs students need something very individualized, very specific. Uh, they need therapy, and this is normally done by therapists. But the problem is now in Asian countries, including Malaysia, Thailand, uh, Philippines, Vietnam, Timor Leste, uh, all of uh, of the Asian countries, we don't have enough numbers of therapists to access uh, to be accessed by the students. Okay, so now the most viable therapy or intervention agents are teachers. Okay, if not parents, then they are teachers, and that's why it's very important for teachers to implement the individualized education plans or programs. Okay. And what do we want to achieve from this IEP is actually positive change of behavior, social skills, or academic. Okay, so well, because we are doing uh, much more on the social skills, then perhaps what we want to achieve is more on the behavior and social skills because these two really connect to each other. Okay, now the process is very simple, it's the common process. For most of the things in the education system, you have to assess, then you have to evaluate, you have to plan, and you have to implement. Okay, now, step one, assessment. So we are talking here about assessment for social skills. Yeah, We're not talking about assessment for mathematics, science, and so on and so forth. Okay, so remember about the skills that one Yasmin has told you in the first day of presentation. Okay, so in social skills, we're talking about pre-verbal, pre-verbal, the skills that baby use, like eye contact, pulling hands, requesting by pointing, yeah, and so on and so forth, smiling, responding to other people smiling. So that's pre-verbal. And then expressive language, your spoken language, do the child speaks in one or two words, do the child does not have language at all do the child able to narrate stories tell stories or not okay so that will fall under the expressive language okay now we have the initiation respond maintain conversations okay so you have some students when you give a book they are able to read the book yeah but then when you put them in the group they just quiet all the time okay they just don't speak now, what you have to question yourself is perhaps is this problem with the social skills? Difficulties to initiate, to start a conversation, okay? The difficulties to respond when someone is telling you or asking you questions and the difficulties to maintain when you speak something, then he goes off topic when you are talking about Malaysia and suddenly he's talking about nasi lemak or something else, just go out of topic, okay? Poor topic maintenance, all right? And perhaps also uh, perspective taking, okay? So I've told you about theory of mine. We've, uh, we've gone through a lot of theories yesterday. So perspective taking, understanding that you have your own thought, other people have their own thoughts. You have feelings, other people have feelings, okay? When you do something that will affect other people, other people's emotions and behavior will affect you. Okay, so that is perspective taking. All right, and the next one is behavior and emotions. We have a lot of questions yesterday about behavior and emotions, and I hope to address that today in our presentation. Okay. Now I'm giving you an example. This is just an example of a social skills assessment that you might want to do. Okay, this is my own template actually. So it's up to you. You can be creative and do whatever template that you want. But the most important thing is to address the five points that we have here. Okay, so for example, when it comes to behavior, I, I want to figure out whether it's aggressive behavior, whether the child has Poor emotional management. Yesterday, I read a comment that saying the students has very frequent change of emotions, like suddenly cry, suddenly happy, suddenly sad again. All right, and then inappropriate behaviors, like for example, picking, uh, picking nose, and then put whatever he picked the nose uh, in, and then put it in the food, which is inappropriate behaviors. Okay, rigidity and repetitive behaviors, like. 
No, I want the toys to be lined up like this, okay? The toys cannot be like up, 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 or down, 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 or turn into buildings or something like that. It needs to be aligned, so rigidity there. Or repetitive behavior is like going back and forth, repetitive talk, okay, repetitive hand movements, okay, a lot of that. And also sitting tolerance, so how long the child uh, is able to sit on the chair. All right, so that will address the behavior part. Okay, so it's very important that when you address the behavior, if there is a lot of aggressive behaviors, yeah. So this is a tip for you guys, yeah. If uh, the child has aggressive behaviors and uh, he has diagnosis of ADHD, okay, do ask the parents if the child is under medication, okay, because some of the uh, students who are uh, who who are ADHD, they are on medications to reduce that aggressive behaviors and help them to attend well to the uh, to the lessons in the classrooms. So I remember this one case uh, from my psychologist. So the child has uh, autism and ADHD. So he has been on medication for six months, I guess, uh, when he met uh, us. But the problem is the the medication is not working at all and he's still aggressive he would still jump around you know hit other people and stuff okay but we realized that when we prompt the mother it's just a matter of a small and very tiny fix what happened is that the mother let the child consume the medication with tea okay so as you know tea has caffeine Okay, I'm, I'm not a scientist myself, but tea, because of the caffeine or the contents in the tea uh, or coffee, yeah, because it's the same, like coffee also has caffeine, it might inhibit okay, or stop the efficacy of the medications. But after we recognize that problem and the psychologist advised the mother to uh, let the child have the medication with plain water or mineral water, the medication starts to take, take effect, okay, and the child is able to sit still and he is more cooperative in my sessions and he starts to develop understanding of words more and more, okay. So that's why it's very important for you to, to look and interview the parents as well, okay. Next is the pre-verbal, okay, so eye contact, attention, taking turns, uh, imitate actions, sound and words, matching objects and pictures. Actually, matching objects and pictures is more on the cognitive side, but I would put it in the pre-verbal because, you know, sometimes kids just doesn't have language and I might want to approach the facts, you know, using the picture exchange communication system or picture communication system. But for me, to let the child do that, I must make sure that the child is able to uh, match objects and pictures first. Okay, next is verbal skills. I want to know whether they are non-verbal, limited verbal or verbal. Okay, so non-verbal is entirely no words, yeah, basically. Yeah? No words at all, just like uh, uh, mm, mm, like that. Okay, so limited verbal, at, at least they would have a word or um, they would have the sound effects like douche, mm, uh, we, choo choo, something like that. So they might have the potential to have more words, okay? And verbal, uh, as you know, we are all verbal, uh, has words, can narrate stories, and so on and so forth. Okay, and then you want to explore the same thing, but in, in, in different aspects, initiate a two-way conversation, whether they are able to greet, request, comment, ask questions, do they look into the eye of the communicator? So that is the pre-verbal behaviors, okay? How about their body language when they initiate, okay? Uh, responding, maintaining, it will be the same, staying on topic, all right? Personal space is very important. Uh, this is um, disrupted usually, personal space in our Down syndrome students, you know, they have difficulties to understand this personal space, yeah? Uh, so maybe they are just too friendly and then go too close and then start touching you and assume that you are uh, the same friend and of the same gender of you, okay? And then perspective taking, um, whether they are aware of their surrounding or not, 
they are aware that uh, there are different rules okay uh, about the social skills that people are giving like for example when we are moving our legs okay like like that so it could mean that uh, people just get bored of what you talk about and people just want you to stop from talking all right i cannot see you guys today in the video so i cannot see that social cues so i will just guess everything is okay otherwise you can type in the chat box okay and then we uh, can explore more about my thoughts and feelings and your thoughts and feelings okay so these are the areas that you might want to explore otherwise you can make the assessment template just much more simpler just address the common problems that you always witness in your school for example uh, greetings requesting commenting asking what else taking turns okay so you just you might want to do this sample template uh, this simple template of assessment and just have a tick okay all right so it's up to you whatever you feel is okay and easy for you all right but just address the whole part of the social skills okay and the next one okay abc chart abc chart is usually used by psychologists okay uh, teachers can use it as well uh, to uh, to help manage the child's uh, emotional and behavior okay so what you do is you have the date you have the time okay and you list down the antecedent antecedent is what happens before the behavior all right and next one you list down the behavior okay and next is the consequences what happens after the behavior and last one you identify the function of that behavior okay let's say i'm giving you this example here okay the the behavior is tantrum the child hates people you know knock on the other people and stuff like that maybe cry and shout so what happens before that tantrum is that the teacher asks him and all of his friends to line up outside the classroom so you know now what happens before the classroom uh, be before the behavior okay now you figure out what happens after the behavior so what happens is that teacher allows the student to remain inside the classroom to calm down Sorry, that's a spelling error there. Calm down. So the function here is it to escape from the task or from the activity lining up outside the classroom? Or is it to secure attention of the teacher? Or is it to assess tangible items? Okay, access what he likes. For example, might be Legos, okay? Or is it like some sort of sensory reinforcement, something related to his tactile needs, visual needs? okay or something like that in this case in this example the function is to escape this student doesn't want to line up outside the classroom that's why he is tantrum okay so what the student teacher did is actually allowing the student to remain inside the classroom to calm down okay which is actually uh, not the right way because you know now the student knows that oh for me to escape i need to do the tantrum i need to be tantrum to be in tantrum Okay, because the, the teacher will then allow me to remain inside the classroom. Okay, so this is the chart that you can use part of your assessment if you are interested in behavior management plan. Okay, because this uh, also disrupts your social skills. Okay, as what I say, be flexible. The idea of social skills assessment is to answer the who, the what, the where, the when, the how, and the why questions. If you feel my template doesn't answer that questions, you can always improvise, okay? Now, we proceed to the next step. In the next step, we have assessed the student. Now we evaluate our assessment results and we write a plan, okay? So when we evaluate and plan for the students, there are things to consider. So you have to be mindful of the child's age. Okay. Levels of functioning. Why do I talk about this age and levels of functioning? Okay. No, talk about the social skills at early stage or social skills in mainly about play. 
playing with friends, pretendly playing together, playing together in a group. Okay, but as you grow older, do you want to focus still on the play skills or perhaps more on preparing the students for working transitions? Social skills that are specifically required for the working transitions. So that's why you have to be mindful. You have to be aware of the age. Okay, and about the levels of functioning. Okay, let's say the child is 16 years old. Okay, 16 years old, um, high school. Yeah, quite ready, very ready for the working transition. If the child is low function, do you still want to focus on the play skills? I wouldn't. I would focus on the working transition social skills like basic greetings and also following instructions um, like maybe packaging activities so that it is practical and my plan will make him functional after the call, uh, after the after school all right and next one you have to uh, take into consideration of the student's interest his strengths and weaknesses okay we talk about uh, theory of um, extreme male brain, the pattern seekers yesterday, uh, high functioning students, they love systems, they love something that is uh, systemized and have patterns. For your information, in a country, I cannot say the name of the country, I'm afraid that it will be controversial. In a country, uh, in the Mid Eastern country, I think. They actually hire our students, these high-functioning students, as a tracker. So this student is responsible to track the changes in patterns so that they know when terrorist attacks happen. Isn't that fascinating? Okay. Now you use the strength to give the child an employment. All right. So that's why you have to consider the strengths and weaknesses when you plan for the students. Next, you have to consider the students' needs versus parents' concerns. Okay, for example, in my working scope, a lot of parents want something that is more academic. Ah, oh, we don't want something social, play and stuff. We want our students, our child to be able to write ABC, to read, okay? So what I do here is to give my two cents, my thoughts on the child's development. Okay, so I will do consultation. Okay, I have mentioned about handling difficult clients before. But if the parents still insist on going very, very academic, I will proceed the academic part, but I will also integrate the social part little by little. Okay, so you will still have to respect uh, the parents' opinions, okay, because they are our customers, okay, if I were to say in that way, all right? And then you need to be aware of the curriculum. Like what I said, in Malaysia context, we have curriculum for special education needs that teachers need to complete every year. And at the same time, teachers need to carry out individualized education plan, okay? So having two separate things, might be too heavy for teachers. I know teachers in Malaysia might be a bit stressed of that, okay? But let's say in the curriculum of um, staff management, pengurusan diri, okay, staff management subject, uh, something about toileting or like that. So let's say the students is unable to go to the toilet, request to the toilet, it might be as easy, you know, your, the, your individualized education plan is for the student to request to go to the toilet because that is functional for him, okay? So make sure you have that tallyness, okay? So that it's easy for you to uh, achieve whatever you plan in individualized education plan. It can be a small goal, but make sure it's achievable, all right? So what to include uh, in your plan is you talk about the current social skills, what the students already have, okay? And the social skills to be developed, and you can talk a bit about your intervention format. Can you do it one-to-one -one or you can't? Or do I need it to do with the help of his friends? 
So that will be peer medi mediated uh, intervention with the help of his peers in the classroom. And you have to think about how, where, and when you can do the individualized education plan. Now, I'm giving you another example here. So Ryan, Ryan is eight years old and six months. He has autism spectrum disorders, okay? Even though I don't talk about visual impairment and hearing impairment, I think you guys can pretty much generalize yeah, this one, so show, uh, this template to other, to whatever goals you, are, you have for the students. So for example, Ryan has limited requesting, okay? He is uh, non-verbal actually in this case. So the social skills that I want to develop is for him to increase requesting in various ways. Teachers need to be mindful when we talk about social skills. Our aim is not for the students to speak and speak in words, verbal. Usually that will, will not be my goal. I'm not sure about other speech pathologists, but my goal would be for the student, for in this case Ryan, to request more and more often. Okay, and more independently in various ways. He can see in words, he can point, he can pull me, he can give me eye contact rather than him sitting down and have no attention at all to request. Okay, so that's what, what I want from him. And then let's say I've identified his likes. So what he likes is uh, food. So I will have a list of his favorite food and I will use that in the requesting activities. So the intervention format that I chose here is one-to-one. -one. I know teachers will ask, no, Miss Finney, we cannot do one-to-one -one in schools. It's impossible because we have other students. Okay, all right, hang on there. So the format that I will use here is I'm using the interest of the student, which is food, and then I will use packs, uh, the picture as change communication system. So I will have pictures of the food that he likes and he brings to school. All right, uh, and I will use that in the in my intervention or, or in my IEP. So where I do and conduct this, every time at the canteen during break time, okay? I think this is very practical because we have um, students, it might be students who are smarter uh, who, uh, than Ryan, who can be his uh, buddy and help me to carry out this uh, as the physical prompter during break time in the canteen, all right? Or else I can have the teaching uh, teacher's aid to help me, all right? Okay, so we recap a bit about the social skills strategies. Okay, a lot that we have addressed yesterday, but in Ryan's case, I use his interests and face-to-face -face also, because when you do the activity, you want to be face-to-face, -face, all right? Make sure you are at eye level with the student. I use visual aids, uh, and in this case, specifically, it's PACS, Picture Exchange Communication System. I repeat, okay, I repeat the process, and I model the students how to do it. I have the physical prompter to help me give the, the cart, okay? And also, I wait for the child's response. Okay, so a lot of strategies that I've been using here. And I'm sure actually teachers have been using a lot of social strategies in your daily lessons. But it's just a matter of using them consistently and be patient with the outcome and do step by step. Okay. All right. So we talk about the behavior just now. We use the ABC chart. Let's say we have identified the functions to gain attention. Okay, tantrum, crying. Uh, hitting people, sudden attack is to gain attention or is it to escape, avoid demands or interaction or is it to gain sensory stimulation or to avoid unwanted stimulation. For example, yeah, you have students who go back and forth and then hit their, themselves on the, on the floor, on, on the wall or is it to gain tangible items to get what they want, okay, uh, favorite toys or something like that. So we have the extinction procedures. Extinct means reduce, you know, like animal extinction. So it's the same thing. It's the same meaning here. Extinction procedures. Okay, so what you can do is you can ignore. Okay, so for example, you have students who keep asking questions nonstop in the classroom. So the classroom is very disruptive. Yeah, so what you can do is you can ignore. 
it seems a little bit annoying, you know, and a little bit uh, rude, but actually it's the right thing to do because this is what psychology is, um, and many therapies have used, yeah? Sometimes you just have to ignore if it is a manipulative behavior. In this case, it's to gain attention. So how do you ignore? Can someone tell me, how do you ignore a child who is trying to gain attention? Do you pat on their shoulder? Or do you keep quiet and look at them? Okay, I will give you the answer, okay? For children who tries to gain attention, by doing challenging behaviors like tantrum, crying, so on and so forth. You can ignore them, but the ignoring part, what you have to do is no eye contact. You might as well put your body away from them. So that is total ignore. Yeah. If you still, you are quiet and still looking at them, actually you are not ignoring them. Okay. Remember these kids are very smart. You see? Okay. Next is deny opportunity for breaks. So, for example, uh, the student is supposed to complete his mathematics work or job uh, or task. So, he keeps on uh, raising his hands or making weird noises because he doesn't want to complete the work. So, you might as well just ignore him and then uh, ask him to complete the work. Okay, so he must complete the work. All right. So, that is denied opportunity for breaks. Or you might as well redirect. So, for example, the example I give you just now, you have a student who always go back and forth and then knock the head on the wall. So, that is very dangerous. So, what you do is you have, a, okay, maybe knock on the table. So, you have a pillow, okay? You have a pillow and then you just let her knock her head, but then on the pillow. So, you redirect to something that is safer for the child, okay? And lastly is you deny access to materials. So deny access to materials, not giving them the items, okay? Uh, and you blend all of these strategies together uh, with the social skill strategies, okay, that we have talked uh, about yesterday. The next step is implement. So in the implement part, what you have to do is first teach one skill at a time. If your target is for the child to request to the toilet, focus on that and stop. Make it very specific, okay? The next one, teach the deficits, okay? Not what the child already has. So for example, the child is not requesting to, to go to the toilet, so that is the deficit. So you want to teach the child to request to go to the toilet, all right? The next one is you must make sure that whatever a push you use, you must be concrete in your intervention plan or in your IEP, all right? Because they are very visual learners, okay? Regardless, uh, they are visually impaired or hearing impaired or um, ASD, ADHD, autism, Down syndrome, dyslexia, okay? They are all visual learners, okay? Most of them, majority of them are visual learners, okay? And the last one, you have to think about the outcome values. You know, if you guys are keen on doing research, okay, or you guys are doing research, okay, I'm sure you guys are very familiar that when you do a research, there needs to be a definitive value so that you can see the difference before and after, okay? So you can talk about the level of prompts that you give before and after, you can talk whether it's independent, the child is able to do it independently or with assistance. How much assistance? Is it mild? Is it moderate? Or is it uh, total assistance? You can talk about the duration. The child is able to wait for five seconds and then in the second, uh, uh, on the second day, he is able to wait for 10 seconds, able to wait for 30 seconds. Now you see yourself how the child progresses, okay? And you can also talk about the frequency. Uh, request five times, tomorrow he requests three times, uh, the next day request 10 times, so on and so forth. So make sure you include the outcome values in your implementation. 
So this is an example. All right. So the goal is for the student to request in various ways. Okay. Uh, things to request is put during break time. And the strategy that I use is text. I use modeling here. I have the physical prompter to help the text process. Uh, we use weight and I also reinforce, okay, whenever he did that right, I will praise him, okay. So during day one, the outcome uh, that I am targeting is uh, for the student to be able to request for crackers. So let's say he likes crackers, yeah, biscuits. By exchanging packs with crackers two times, two times with physical prompter. So I said achieved, okay. The next time I increase the frequency five times achieved tick all right and then i increase more still five times but now we have the options with and without physical prompter we can be a little bit more specific by saying request three times with physical prompter two times without physical prompter so on and so forth okay and then i tick achieve okay now with this documentation you can see the progress of your child uh, um, uh, more effectively and then you can present this outcome to parents to convince them okay i'm sure this is a very concrete evidence to to support whatever you have in mind about the student the next one of course when you have implement you have to document so just now we have documented and you have to reflect okay whether i should continue with the same goal should i add more so he has requested for uh, food but it's very narrow it's just food he's not requesting for something else maybe i should revise the goals by adding more items to be able to request for textbooks uh going to the toilet or routine or something like that okay so you have to think about that going up with the goal or going down with the goal and uh, so you update them accordingly and then you have to repeat the whole process yeah uh, from assess evaluate um uh, plan and so on and so forth okay we will just uh stop this part first okay uh, i think i will give everyone a break time okay because everyone is firing their neurons very actively and i'm sure everyone's quite lethargic after the 50 minutes talk okay so what i will do is stop sharing Okay, I will first open for the Q&A session, for a quick Q&A session. If you don't have questions, I will uh, give you a rest, a five minutes rest. You can turn on uh, your mic. Hello. 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 Yes, hello. 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 For oh. Odyssey, uh, for Odyssey student. Okay, all right. Oh, uh, yeah, I yeah. will not be able to answer that. I think uh, a person who is able to answer that is um, representatives from Malaysia because they work directly with the kids in school. So they oh, will yeah. know the time, how and when. During my time, it's quite different, I think. Uh, I used to be in oh, school. Yeah. I was in school for two years. But afterwards, I work in uh, in the state education department. So maybe teachers from Malaysia, how do you carry out the individualized education program? RPI? Do you have a specific time frame? Or do you just blend in? in between? Okay, Assalamualaikum. Oh, yes. Okay, I want to try, uh, try to sharing, okay, for us in Malaysia. Maybe Mr. Zhao, okay, mute, okay, that's great. Okay, wonderful. Miss Joya, you can continue. Yeah. For us in uh, teacher in Malaysia, usually uh, we... We have a 
uh, two uh, two choice. Okay. Uh, I focus to the law function first. Eh? Law function first. Okay. Uh, during the first uh, first uh, one to six months. Okay, the assessment, and then uh, after that, uh, uh, example, for example, uh, start from January to June, uh, one report, and then June to uh, October, November, like that. Okay, yeah. all right. Miss Juaria, as yes. a teacher who works in Malaysia, yeah. okay, you have to do the RPI or the yeah. IEP. So, do you conduct or carry out your IEP plans? Uh, during any time lessons, so you just bind in everything, you know, maybe sikit sikit during mathematic time, you know, or mm. do you have a specific time? Okay, uh, maybe 12 to 12 .30 no, no, in your timetable because we have to follow the curriculum, mm. okay, the series of curriculum. So, uh, those teacher allowed to uh, uh, cross the curriculum. You know, mm -hmm. cross the curriculum in Marantas curriculum, eh? Yes. Uh, so, yes. for example, for myself, I teach uh, English, and then by the same times, I have to assess the student based on my uh, experience. Past experience. Before that, I um, deaf and the, the deaf teacher, and then uh, during this uh, four four years, I uh, involved in uh, learning disabilities uh, student. So my past experience is very useful because mm. uh, it's Alhamdulillah, I, till I was uh, attend the therapist course, mm -hmm. but as, uh, actually, how to say, <laughs> uh, I'm not comment, but um, unluckily, unluckily uh, mostly, mostly teachers in program, disabilities program, uh, they have very lack of knowledge about uh, the technique how to handle uh, during uh, handle especially in develop in language uh, speech yeah. hearing mm -hmm. uh, hearing attention uh, something mm. like that. Okay, I do agree with Puan Juaria. Actually, what we experienced yeah. in Malaysia, because I used to be a teacher as well, at least for yeah. two years, okay, very short period of time. So I'm yeah. sure Puan Juaria and the rest of the other teachers have much more experience in the education system than me. Uh, actually, what happened is that teacher has a lot of work because they have to yep. focus on the curriculum. They have to carry out the curriculum. You have a timetable right from, I'm not sure, 7.30 to maybe 1.30 uh, for, uh, for you to carry out the curriculum. Okay, yep. that is official from the Ministry of Education. But at the same time, you have to plan for this IEP for the um, for these disabled students and carry out in between. Okay, that's why I address in my examples that possible times that you want to address uh, is during break time. Okay, mm -hmm. or something that is very routine, like requesting to go to the toilet. Okay, or maybe something that is very common, like doing group activities, like uh, playing together. Okay, uh, but otherwise, if it's really, really big goals, it would be very difficult for teachers to blend them in in the mm, yes. uh, curriculum they were lesson <laughs> yes, yes yeah okay because that would be the struggle i'm not sure the uh, okay puan nurul atika says here we blend it while we are teaching yes that's right uh, okay what is the standard classroom size or number of learners uh, with autism in every teacher okay uh, there is no specific number of learners with autism in every teacher I've been told that in Singapore, uh, I'm not sure about the numbers, but I'm, I'm sure of this. In Singapore, they have grouped the students according to their functioning levels, which is great, wonderful, and awesome. So it's easy for teachers to carry out their lesson plans. Okay, so this one class is only for autism, low functioning. Okay, this one class is for autism, moderate functioning. Isn't that great? So that you will expect almost the same goals. Okay, a little bit of differences, but uh, more or less the same goals. Okay, but in Malaysia, and I believe in most countries uh, in Asia, what happened is that in our classroom, in one special education classroom, 
you have a set of students with mild, moderate yes. uh, functioning. <laughs> there is a dyslexia students. There you have your ADHD students. There you have your ASD. There you have the uh, intellectual disability students. And that's why I would have to agree that it is very difficult for you to carry out the individualized education uh, plans or programs. Okay, that will be your main challenge. But madam, thank you. Ms. Or I need just answered that picture exchange communication system. Okay, let me see again. Uh, in okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you. Madam, I, I try. Madam, madam, I try. I try yes. in my uh, action plan. I try to uh, write everything uh, uh, that I get from this uh, three days courses, mm -hmm. and then maybe in, I will start in my oh. district with the teachers okay to implementation how to uh, teach the jumble jumble student and the one class uh, so try to, to think about what would yeah. be the same among your yeah. students mm, okay. okay something that try. is functional and critical okay so we will go further after this uh, a lot of questions that we have in the box i teach okay can i ask a questions daughter yes. Yeah, sure, sure. I, I'm Miss Finney. I'm not a, a medical doctor, unfortunately. <laughs> you can just call me Finney if you want. <laughs> I have to take PhD to get that doctorate. <laughs> okay, yes, what's the question? So, I'm in. Yes, what's Hello. the question, please? Uh, uh, I am Mia. I am Mia Du from Yama. Okay. Uh, my question is, uh, I had already learned uh, the curriculum in Malaysia for science students, uh, but we don't have a special curriculum for science students. Uh, my question is, uh, in your country, uh, uh, the curriculum for science students has completed in the real time. Oh, okay. I think uh... Uh, because I think uh, all these things, ADHD, hyperactive students are no um, uh, stable in learning the curriculum uh, in very long time saturation. Okay, I'm just going to repeat that question. Correct me if I'm wrong. So you are asking about whether the curriculum in Malaysia for SEN students, special education needs students, has yes. been completed or not? Is that the right question? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. So you want to know more about the curriculum and how we implement that? All right. Okay. All right. Uh, I will try my best, okay, because I'm more into the intervention side. Okay. So Malaysian teachers, if I got this wrong, please correct me. As far as I know, that we have developed curriculum uh, for low functioning, and the typical functioning, is that right? Right. Uh, not typical functioning, just uh, uh, disabled students. Yeah, we have low functioning as well, according to the decrease. And uh, so you carry out the, your lesson plans according to these curriculums. Okay. So the classrooms in Malaysia, like for example, my previous school, we have the low functioning and high functioning. But in this low functioning, what happens is that you have ADHD, uh, autism, intellectual disability, so their characteristics is different, but they are considered low functioning. So they are grouped in one class. And then they will uh, learn according to the low functioning curriculum. But teachers in Malaysia also have the flexible flexibility to do the RPI for the low functioning. I think it's called flexible uh, education plan. Uh, can't remember about that the, the right term maybe i'll get uh, to you later at the end of the this talk i will try my best uh, if yes. teachers in malaysia can help me about that uh, there is a curriculum that you can use for the low functioning students we just don't have to do the curriculum uh, okay uh, carry out the curriculum yeah okay i want to try actually mm. uh now this okay our education uh, education department uh, divide by three okay divide by three uh the student uh, can uh, follow the syllabus the high high 
high, high level student, uh, they have got two choice. Okay, they are go to the um, inclusive class. Okay, mm -hmm. inclusive class. That means uh, they can able they, they, the student able to uh, follow the syllabus and then sit for the exam. All right, uh, especially the uh, sit for the exam like the normal normal students. And then uh, second is a uh, second is a uh, curriculum uh, KSSM. That mean uh, the education department uh, allow the student to follow the uh, skills. Okay, more to skills. Okay, more to skills. Uh, and then the third groups. I mean, the love function one is uh, that <laughs> Madam said <laughs> just now, but uh, the department increased, okay? A lot, the teachers increase the student to sophisticated skills. Uh, for example, the love function one, maybe they can't uh, follow uh, the academic and mathematic uh, language, so on. So focus to the skills, for example, arts, Car wash, cooking, uh, uh, and then other other mm -hmm. skills. All right. Yep, so, uh, that's right, Puan Juaria. So, mm -hmm. um, yep, I, I'm well aware of that as well. So, special education students in Malaysia who have been diagnosed, yep. uh, you know, they can go into the mainstream, which is called the yep. inclusive mm -hmm. education. It can be half inclusion. Half inclusion yep. programs, meaning that uh, they are in the mainstream program for some subjects yep. and they mm -hmm. are in the special education program for certain yep. subjects. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, if they are in the full inclusion program, then that means that they have the diagnosis, they have the, the, the disability card, but mm -hmm. then they study entirely in the mainstream system. Okay, yep. uh, the other option is for them to be in the spe special education system. Okay, if you are learning disabled, then it would uh, most likely be the program Pendidikan Has Integrasi or Special Education Integration Programs. Yes. Um, the programs you have it in most uh, in in normal schools actually okay so it's a normal school you have students who study in the mainstream and then you have this one section in the school where it's called special education integration program so they they are in the same school but they have different curriculums okay yep. but they join the same assembly and uh, the same sports yeah. game so on and so forth. The other option is uh, Sekolah Kebangsaan Pendidikan Khas or Special Education uh, School. Oh, the okay, so these schools are, are, yes, these schools are for visually impaired, hearing impairment. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, uh, some of these schools have been open to uh, learning disabled students like ASD and stuff because of high number of, uh, of applications from uh, learning disabled students, uh, but it's very early at the stage, okay? Uh, and when uh, the other options when you enter high school is that Sekolah uh, Menengah Kebangsaan Vocational or Vocational High School for a special education, sort of something like that, yes. mm -hmm. okay? Where once you finish the school there, you get a certification of skills. And this certification is um, accepted in most of the industries in Malaysia, mm -hmm. okay? So that would be great yeah. for, the, for our students, all right? So I think that uh, that explains. Okay, I'm so sorry that I, I won't be able to, I was not able to explain entirely about the curriculum. We, it would be perfect if we have a curriculum officer next to me and then I would uh, ask, uh, ask the officer to explain to you guys. Okay, so now we will just proceed with our presentation. Okay, it seems like we have a lot of questions. So I will skip uh, whatever games that we have today, I guess. Okay, I apologize for that. Okay, so we are going as, uh, into case studies. Okay. So let's watch this very, very simple video short.
Okay, all right, there you go. Okay, now we're going to talk about who, what, doing, where, when, why, how, and describe. You see, when you see someone, you have to, uh, you see your student, okay, you want to do something for your student, you have to assess them. Okay, so you have to ask a series of questions to, to address the issue. Okay, so we'll go fast on this. So who is this? This is Jenna. And what's in front of her? She has a fast food burger, uh, fast food burgers. Uh, she has fries, I think so. And what he, is she doing? She is crying. Okay, she's throwing tantrums a bit. Uh, and where is she? She is in the classroom. Uh, she's in school. And when is that? It's during lunchtime. And lunchtime. And why is she crying? Because she cannot eat. Okay. She cannot accept no, like teacher is actually stopping her from eating the fast food and burger because it's not good for her. And she's rigid. Rigid is because every time during her lunchtime, she just wants to have fast food and that's it. Okay, I have students like this, like during uh, lunchtime, it must be Maggie, the instant noodles and Coke. It cannot be any other things. Okay, so very rigid. Yeah. So most likely this is autism. Sometimes you can see this in ADHD as well. All right, uh, and uh, touch face. So that's what the teacher does. Okay, uh, so touch face. What the teacher does is, if you realize that the teacher touching the child's face is giving attention, actually, yeah. So that's why I think the child keeps crying. Okay, so the behavior uh, is 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 not being extinct. And then, uh, if I were to describe the situation, I will say that it is a very very disruptive uh, situation. Because when a child cries, you know, you just disrupt the whole class. Uh, lessons cannot be continued. If other people are eating in the same area, people would just uh, not feel comfortable about it. Okay, so it's definitely something that needs to be intervened. Okay, now question time. What would be the best goal for Jenna to improve her flexibility? Because we're saying that Jenna is very rigid. She must have her burgers every time it's lunchtime. So what would be her goal? Is it to take turns? Okay, I'm, I'm getting some answers. Yep. Okay, try to put in mind that uh, Jenna needs to stop uh, eating the burgers or reduce eating the burgers. Or maybe at that time cannot eat the burger even on that particular day. So is Jenna's goal to... Okay. Hmm. Try. I'm a bit nervous now because I'm not getting the answer that I want. <laughs> okay, nevertheless, it can be the other goal as well. We'll see the answer. But good try, everyone. It's actually for Jenna to accept no because she is very rigid. Okay, she cannot accept no. She cannot accept it when uh, the teacher says no to the burgers. Okay, but learning to wait is also a, a good goal, I believe. Learning to wait uh, when it's time to eat burgers. Okay, that is acceptable, definitely. All right. So it's I guess it depends on on how you perceive the situation. So I would say B and C can be correct. All right. Uh, taking turns, probably not that suitable in this situation, okay, because he does not have to take turns to, to eat the burgers, all right? Now, okay, so when you develop a social story, so actually social story can be a hard work for teachers, yeah? So I would recommend you, uh, if you want to do a social story, if you are a very, very, very hardworking teacher, you, are, you love doing resources, you know, it's okay. You can just do social stories for most of the things, okay? Uh, because it works uh, most of the times if you repeat uh, a lot of times. But otherwise, what you can do is you choose a very, very disruptive behavior, okay? Because those are the things that you want, you really want to address and you really want to reduce, okay? In this uh, situation, I use the social story, accepting no, because Jenna did that every day, yeah? Let's say she's doing that every day during lunchtime and during whatever eating time. Every time when we go out to play bowling and he, she, everybody's eating rice and she still wants to have her burgers. So I think this is a really big goal for her because she's very persistent on like, no, 
I'm, I won't accept it. So the, the problem with her is not accepting no. So the desired behavior that I want from her is to accept no. So I will establish the story cycle as, as accepting no. All right. Now I have to think of the steps. Okay, so don't go uh, confused with this. It's actually quite simple. Try to think about uh, how, yeah? The how question is the most important part because now you have the problem. The child is unable to accept no. So how, what are the strategies that you might introduce to deviate the child from uh, doing his behaviors or her behaviors, this tantrum thingy, all right? Uh, and also, you can list uh, possible no's, sizes of no's, like easy, medium, hard. Okay, I will explain more about this later on. And then you can start writing your simple language and sentences. You can read with your student, let the parents have that book uh, at home as well, and then you repeat the whole process. Okay. So, for example, social story, accepting no. I'm making a very simple one. So that is not difficult for teachers to do, and it's also uh, easy for Jenna to understand. So this is Jenna. So you have a picture of Jenna. Jenna likes to eat burgers and fries. Simple sentence there, okay? Because the problem is with the burgers. She just loves burgers so much, okay? Fast food. Sometimes Jenna cannot eat burgers and fries. Her teacher will say no, okay? I will not put uh, healthy, it's not healthy and stuff, because I assume in this case, Jenna is very low functioning. So I just go direct with my words. Jenna cannot eat burgers. Her, her teacher will say no. All right. What Jenna will do, she will cry. So when teacher says no, so now we go to the steps, yeah? Like the how, how you can manage this problem. So when teacher says no, Jenna can choose something else to eat. All right. So giving options. So Jenna can uh, choose uh, apples, or maybe cereals or pasta here, any food that she always brings to schools, all right? And you can actually have this set of uh, choices uh, or picture cards on the table as well during lunchtime uh, for them to pick, all right? To, so, so they have the choices to, to be made as well, not only in the social story book, you have uh, a different set of cards, all right? So Jenna can drink a cup of water. So other than making choices, she can also drink a cup of water just to calm her down. Uh, Jenna can take a walk outside the classroom for five minutes. Good job, Jenna. You can do it. All right. So I know it's very difficult, but research and a lot of people who have done it, uh, we have a center here. It's called Genius Cunha. Genius Kunya is a school uh, for autism uh, spectrum disorders in Malaysia. And the students there, uh, most of the times they use the social story and that has uh, impressive effect on the student's behavior. That's what I've heard so far. And I do have clients from the Genius Kunya who comes to me and I can see that uh, their behaviors have been shaped uh, very well by the Genius Kunya approach. But this is possible because Genius Kunya has a lot of teaching aids, yeah? So you have to think about uh, your resources as well as you choose your social skills strategies. Okay, so how do you implement it? So you read the social story together. Okay, now you have to question yourself. <laughs> is the student compliant for the book or for the social story? If not, then this wouldn't be the right option, okay? All right, so I've, I've seen some answers like, no, 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 no social story. But if the student is compliant enough to sit down and uh, attend to some paperwork uh, or table tasks, maybe it's okay, all right? This would be the okay and the right approach for them, okay? Read and watch the social story. Uh, you can introduce the no situations, okay, in the social story, okay? And... And then when they, they do the, the right strategies or they perform the right strategies, then you can praise them. So here we, we use the reinforcement and then you can repeat the process again. Okay. And when you read and watch, you model as well how. Okay. So for in this case, uh, the thing that you can model is this part when you choose something else to eat. So you choose, you show this social storybook 
when teacher says no, Jenna can choose something else to eat. And you have a set of these cards also. And then you can give physical prompter, okay, like oh, apple. Okay, yes, you want to eat apple. There you go. I give apple to you. All right, so you're giving that modeling as well as you tell the story so that the, uh, the student is able to associate and make connections, okay, of the social story and what is expected. All right, so that's, okay, so that will be her goals. All right, Jenna, uh, I will just proceed. So where I said the canteen, when doing break time, okay? Please try to, uh, to make sure that your plan is practical with whatever you have uh, on the plate. You know, if, if you have a packed timetable, okay, I think it's best to, to, to choose the time during break time or before or maybe after school if the parents pick up the students late. All right, so the short term goal is to accept no, okay? So when you've told the story, now you want to carry it out. Okay, so you can start with the activities of like um, uh, by organizing the levels of notes. Okay, you can start from easy to medium to hard size of notes. Okay, so for example, in this case, I just um, make a, uh, uh, make examples where Jenna, uh, very little interest is ball, chicken and trampoline. Okay, least interest, not very interested. Okay, but what she really, really likes, okay, she will just go tantrum and hit everything if she doesn't get it is burgers, fries, and iPad. Okay, so you start from easy and then get to hard. Okay, and then you can do the modeling as you do the activity. Okay, okay, so we'll just move. So, what should I do if Jenna keeps crying and showing other challenging behaviors? So, you have been telling these social stories to Jenna for a month. Okay, uh, and then during lunchtime uh, or break time, she still cries, okay, she still throws tantrum, then what you want to do is probably extinct, redirect, and follow through. So we've discussed about the extinct and redirect before. So ignore, you want to do something safer. So if she's uh, she's have, she's showing this behavior where she hits things, uh, maybe she hits people. So maybe you want to have a bobo doll, okay, uh, in your classroom. So at least she hits the bobo doll, something like that. To calm her down all right so this is because when there is a behavior like for example seeking attention she wants to escape or something like that okay and you give the positive consequences or attention okay things that you shouldn't be giving attention but you feel like Ayo, kasihan lah, or like pity the kid uh, the kid should be given attention you know i should pet the kid i should hug the kid she's crying but it's actually uh, uh just a manipulative behavior sort of like getting attention and stuff what happened is that the behavior will increase okay so now that is a bigger problem for you that's why sometimes we have to be smart uh, in uh, observing and figuring out whether uh, you should ignore or not okay now, we'll go uh, for questions. Which of the following are accurate ways to extinct Jenna's inappropriate behavior? No eye contact, gently talking to them, turning your body away, explaining why their actions went wrong. Okay, so you can answer in the chat box. Okay, all right. I will just proceed to the answers. Yeah, good try everyone. Okay, the answer is actually A. Remember, we talk about extinction. So these behaviors, which we, you can use the ABC chart, which I've told you at the beginning of this presentation. Okay, so you'll figure out whether the purpose of tantrum is because they want to seek attention and stuff. And one of the ways you can do is uh, extinction. So now the, the keyword is extinct. Okay, so when you want to extinct, what you do is you uh, do no eye contact and you turn your body away. All right, so that would be the right one. Gently talking to them, explaining why their actions were wrong is more about giving rationalization. 
Sometimes it works, sometimes it's not. In Jenna's case, okay, you have a put it by social story and stuff, but she still continues giving the, the same behavior. So now maybe the best approach is to extinct the behavior by ignoring, ignoring that behavior so that it's lesser. So it's not when you, when someone is talking a lot, okay, uh, that can be somehow very annoying, okay? So you want to reduce the person from talking, you might stop talking and ignore and just keep continuing your work, all right? So you, you do no eye contact, you turn your body away, then you would have realized that the person will slowly stop talking to you. Okay, now that is this extinction uh, technique that you have been, uh, that you will use, okay? In this case, in Jenna's case. But actually, there is no right and wrong answer. Gently talking to them is also right. If the child is verbal, has good reasoning skills, it would have been awesome. Okay, explaining why their actions were wrong would be awesome as well. So explaining why their actions were wrong is good if the child is high functioning or mild intellectual disability, they might be able to comprehend that. But in cases where the child is very low functioning, does it help to explain their actions wrong and gently talking to them? Okay, you might have to consider as well. Okay, that's why I told you uh, as well at the planning part, when you plan, you have to consider the child's level of functioning. Okay, I hope that is very clear. But if you are not clear with that, we can talk about it later. Okay, next, Jacob. Okay, because we address a lot of uh, sort of kindergarten, primary school. Now I want to address more on the high school part, okay? So Jacob is 16 and was diagnosed with mild autism, okay? He studies in the SPAT, special education system. He loves sciences and mathematics. He loves doing experiments. You can see that he loves patterns here, yeah? All right. He always interrupts classes by asking and sharing his opinions for 13 to 45 minutes. He does not stop talking when asked to. In group activities, he is rather assertive and dominant. And these behaviors made it hard for him to establish friendship with others. Thus, he is often isolated by his friends. Okay, so as I've told you before, uh, one of the techniques would be extinction. So you ignore, all right. Now, the other technique, that we have used in, uh, that we have mentioned in social strategies, we can use um, visual aids, yeah? So in this case, what I want to target is actually turn-taking skills because he just cannot stop talking. In a conversation, there should be a back and forth, okay? I talk, you talk. Me talk, you talk. But the problem is, he is very dominant. He just won't stop talking. Okay, he has very poor turn taking skills. So, this is what I want to target because when he enters the working environment later, his turn taking is very important for him to have a good and healthy friendship and also a good working and social life. All right, now. So Jacob has mild ESD. I would describe him as assertive and dominant. Uh, what's the, what he keeps doing? He keeps talking, he keeps asking questions. Where is in the classroom? When doing lessons? Uh, why? Because he has big zetted interests. You know, he keeps talking about mathematics perhaps or about science. He has difficulties perspective taking, doesn't understand that another person might be annoyed if he's talking too much and he has very limited turn taking skills so how in the classroom teacher just ask him to stop like stop jacob we don't want to hear you talking all right and that is not effective to develop his turn taking skills now try to think what social difficulties jacob has he has limited eye contact he has difficulties to start a conversation he has difficulties with turn taking and difficulties with perspective taking. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good, good. Everyone's on the track. 
Good job, Martin. Okay. I'm glad everyone's on board with this. Okay. Great, Ms. Nogomala. Yep, definitely. So we'll enter. Yes, the answer is B. He has difficulties with turn taking and also perspective taking. Okay, understanding what other people feel and think about him and uh, how that might affect uh, friendship and relationships. Okay. Now, what would be the best goal for Jacob to improve his interaction with his peers? This is very simple. I've told the answer before. Yes, 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 yes. The Ferrari has started. Everyone is uh, rushing towards the answers. Okay, wait. Yeah, okay, all right, we're good. That's right, so the answer is A, is taking turns. So now try to think about what you need to consider. Okay, so you need to consider about the child's diagnosis, about their interests, about their age, and also deficits. Um, so you're talking here about functional skills, yeah? Because uh, when you plan, you need to be aware of the expectations later on. So in this case, Jacob is 16 years old. So I want to develop something very functional and something that might help his working life uh, and independent skills after school. Okay, all right. So I choose the turn-taking skills. Okay, some other people might choose other goals, but still related to his difficulties and that's fine. That's totally fine. Okay, so here, Jacob is nine years, oh, I put it nine. He is actually 16. My apology for that. Uh, Social skill problems, lack of turn-taking skills, social skills to be developed, so turn-taking, all right, so waiting. You can use the turn-taking time, the waiting time, like wait for 10, 20, 30 seconds as your uh, progress to, to track the progress of the child. And the specific scenarios, uh, you want to focus on vocational activities because he's 16 years old. Yeah, He's 16, yeah, he's not nine. That was an error. And how? You use visual aids, you can use his interests because he has specific and very fixated interests, okay? Uh, and where is that? You can do it during the classroom time and when. If you have vocational classes, you can do it during vocational classes. Otherwise, you can do it uh, during art, science and maths classes where a lot of group activities are done during this time, okay? Or any in any lessons possible. So you have to think about what is easy, medium, and hard for them to take uh, turns, okay? Uh, like in this case, Jacob's hard turn-taking uh, scenario would be something related to mathematics perhaps, yeah? So something easy would be maybe food. He's not interested at food. So maybe you want to, 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 to start with that first, yeah? And then proceed to the hard items. Okay, all right. So because we are talking about vocational skills, so what are the modifications that you can implement? Okay, so what I would use is I'm using the approach by Lego therapy. Okay, if you have heard of it. Okay, so in Lego therapy, they use their interests and also visual aids, a lot of visual aids to help them participate in group activities. Okay, very interesting roles. Okay, so you have a builder, you have an engineer, and you have a supplier. Okay. I'm going to give you uh, examples first with the Lego. So example, as a builder, your task is to construct the structure with the help of supplier and the architect. So you choose, you nominate one person to be the builder. Okay, Jacob, now you are the builder. Okay, Jenna, you are an engineer. Okay, and Finney, you are a supplier. So everyone gets their role, all right? But the problem now is that even though you've given them the role, I would think, okay, in my opinion, this visual aid is not great because a lot of words. Uh, I will struggle with the instructions as well, okay? So what I would do is I may make it very simple. I will use uh, more pictures and less words. So supplier, your task is listen to engineer, okay? Supplier, you find the Lego, okay? Supplier, you give the Lego to the builder. And what is the builder's role? Is to build the, the Lego, to listen to the engineer. 
uh, and how about engineer is to look at the plan tell the supplier which lego to get and tell the builder where to put the legos okay all right we are going to watch a video here okay so in this example oops sorry we'll go back to that so in this example is actually um, a vocational activity so making homemade soap when after afterwards the student can sell the homemade soap all right so it's very functional and it's a good uh, teaching of coping skills because later on in the future they have to survive on their own right so something very functional here so the activity is homemade soap so the engineer here, the task is to look and tell. Builder is listen and mix. Supplier listen, find and give. So I'm sure that every special education schools have their own vocational activities. Okay, so maybe now you have to think, you can try to improvise uh, whatever you have by giving the roles, the fun roles. Okay, engineer, you are the builder, you are the soap designer, you are the supplier. Okay, uh, you handle the store, you are the storage person or something like that. So make it more fun for them. Okay, and it's something that they can associate with the work life later on they are going to face in the future. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Okay, so now how about the visual tasks? Okay, the roles. So soap engineer, you look at the plan. So I use a lot of visuals here yeah? and very simple words. You tell the supplier which uh, ingredients to get. You tell the soap builder how to mix the ingredients, okay? If they are quite moderate or low function, uh, maybe perhaps you want to uh, weigh all your ingredients first. So the task is only to mix, but they are, if they are at high functioning levels, so perhaps you can ask them to weigh, to weigh the ingredients and to mix the ingredients, okay? So you have to be aware of the child's levels of functioning as well. And then the soap builder. Okay, so mix the ingredients, listen to the soap engineer. Mm, we have the soap engineer here. Soap maker actually, soap designer. All right, supplier, listen to the soap engineer and find the ingredient and give the ingredient to the soap builder. Now, we talk about the turn-taking skills, but for the low-functioning uh, sense students, what you have to consider is taking turns, but in short term, are they taking turns already, but in short term, like taking turns, but only in one second and then later they start to grab things? Is it with a specific preferred items or is it with specific people? And what are the challenges? Is it giving up the toys or waiting for the toys? And for you to handle this is you need a social story. You will have to go to the same process. Social story, you have a timer. Timer is for you to track the progress of the child, so able to to wait for 10 seconds, able to wait for 20 seconds. 
and you might have pictures of people. Okay, so uh, this is uh, now it's uh, Jen Aston. So you just flash the card right? and video model of taking turns, right? Sometimes it's just difficult for them to read a book together with you. Paper might be difficult, so you might want to change that into uh, a video model, okay? So this is a step-by-step -step teaching how to take turns. Uh, this is a very, very nice example from Early Autism Malaysian Project. Uh, I like the videos from there. You can watch a lot of uh, very good uh, strategies there if you want to explore Early Autism uh, Project Malaysia or Early Autism Malaysian Project, I don't, something like that. So you read a social story, the step, read a social story, watch a video model, you set up an activity, and then you say, oh, it's A's turn. So in this case, the two ladies are playing cutting fruits. Okay, so that is the activity. So it's A's turn, it's my turn, uh, it's Jenna's turn, it's Jacob's turn. Okay, and then show pictures. When timer beeper beeps, okay, you can give back the item. So in this case, they use the timer to help the child be aware that the turn is transitioning, is changing. And then you use reinforcement at the end, you say good taking turns and then give reward. Okay, something that they like, perhaps like sort of like a cream. Okay. Uh, if they are very tactile and sensory people. Okay, now try to think, why does the adult flash a picture of the child or themselves every time it is that person's turn? Remember, I told you just now, uh, when it's your turn, so I go like, Jenna's turn, Jacob's turn. So why is that? Okay, good. All done. Good job. Yep, definitely. Definitely. Yep. So the child knows whose turn it is. Yes. Okay, that is exactly the right answer. Okay, now we just. Uh... I'm just going to go fast with this. So Ali actually has difficulties with, uh, sorry, excuse me, someone's giving me a call. Okay. Ali is a 10 year old boy. He can read books, does fair in his academics, but he has limited to interaction with his classmates. Sometimes he would glance, yeah? glance look like that at his friends when they are playing. Occasionally, he would move towards his friends and just tear the toys. You know, I have a lot of students like this. When they want something, what they do, or are interested in what other people are doing, they just go at the back of that person and just stare at that person. And that seems quite creepy, right? That is just not socially uh, okay. So we want to change that, yeah? So in addition, he loves making funny sounds and repeat scripts from his favorite cartoon, Open Ipin. So in this example, perhaps, uh, what he needs to improve is for him to request to play with his friends because he's interested at the toys. He wants to play together. Okay. So I prepare a social script. Social script is actually quite the same with social story, but it's much more simple. You don't have to do like one picture, one picture, big picture each. Okay. It's just like this example that I'm giving you on the screen right now. So it's just a page. So look at my friend's face. Ask, can I play with you? Ask, can I have a turn? I play with the toy for a little bit and I give the toy back to my friend to share the toy. All right. Let me just proceed here. Yeah? Now, my problem with this social script is that uh, I don't think it is very helpful when it comes to visuals. Okay, I would prefer something like this. When I want to play with my friends, I will ask, can I play with you? Okay, so the child knows who needs to speak. Is it me? Is it my teacher or something or someone else? Okay, so maybe I will just do something like this. Can I play with you? So I listen and then I wait. Oh, she said yes. Okay, yes. So yes, I will say thank you. But what is the other option? No. So no, then it means that I have to wait. So you have to consider really in your social script, are you giving these choices? Okay, it's sort of like making algorithm. All right. So social scripts, you can actually prepare the social scripts right before your, at the beginning of the year, before you start your lessons. Okay, 
because every most of the time it's very common greetings responding to someone's request to play together request to join in and play chat about shared interests uh, pleasing friends order buy food uh, at school canteen okay so you can just prepare this whole set of social scripts and then just ready to go through uh, all year with your students okay examples okay many different forms okay one is for greetings right on the right and then lunchtime conversation that's probably for moderate to high functioning okay all right so the process will be the same so you read the social script okay so you then model with the prompter you can use uh, your puppets okay because that's what i told you yesterday that one of the examples and you can model without prompter so there is a slightly higher level of functioning there and then you can repeat the process all right so in general okay a, a general case here is about children who has challenging behaviors tantrum hitting others so what i've told you uh, is for you to use the abc chart okay uh, to identify the triggers and you try to identify whether you should extinct redirect follow through is it manipulative should i ignore the child okay or should i deny the task Okay, should I redirect uh, to something else? Okay, like hitting head on the tables, maybe I put a pillow so that it's safer for the child. Okay. Otherwise, if the student is low, uh, high functioning, some dyslexia students are quite high functioning as well, uh, like uh, can be high functioning. All right. So you might want to consider about doing social behavior mapping if they have difficulties with perspective taking. So you want them to list down. If they have difficulties in writing, you can just modify it, ask them to draw. Okay. Uh, so behaviors that are expected given the situation and people. So for example, let's say behavior that is expected when you are at McDonald's. So you have to line up, okay? Um, and how people might feel about the behavior when people uh, or see you, you lining up and joining them lining up before you buying food, then people will feel much more comfortable and happy with that. Okay, they feel fine, okay? Just relax and stuff. Uh, and how others act or react based on how they feel about the behaviors and then the last one is how one might think or feel based on how they are treated about behaviors all right and the same one is for expected okay you can explore about this in the social thinking i'm rushing out of time at the moment so i will just like go tap 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 with this um okay so now Okay, our students also might have difficulties understanding rules. Okay, so for example, they know that reading book is good. But the problem is that when you read book in different situations, sometimes the social rules has changed and reading book is no longer okay or no longer good. For example, in the first picture, the lady is reading a book in a room alone. So that is acceptable. That is okay. Well, that is the right thing to do and it's acceptable. So it is expected. But in the second picture, she is still reading a book when someone is in front of her talking to her. All right. Now, reading a book is no longer considered okay. It is unexpected. It's considered rude when you are not responding to someone's talking to you and you keep reading a book. Okay. And the last one, when you read a book at inappropriate places, like at the parking lot. So this one is considered unexpected because it could be dangerous for you. All right. And people have been asking, how do you manage about the um, emotional regulation and emotional changes in your students? So uh, there is one approach, it's called zones of regulation. If you want to Google that, zones of regulation, they are uh, four different colors. So blue means very calm, green uh, means good, yellow is like, oh, oh, no, no, it's going to get red. So it's like sort of like the warning mood, all right? And then red is really, really angry. So uh, examples of blue would be calm, sick, very low energy, and then you go up high to high energy. So you can have these uh, visual aid, okay? Uh, if you have a Lego, that will be great. Otherwise, you might have a card or you know, with the Velcros, all right? And then pictures of them. Okay, how do you feel right now? So you, are you in the blue, green, yellow or red zone if you feel the student uh, if the student feels that he's in the red zone he can put it there okay so it's another way of expressing their emotions and keep their emotions in check so let's say after recess um 
you ask him again. So let's say, uh, let's see where you are at right now. So let's see the student says, oh, uh, he put, pulls up the Velcro and then put himself on the red. Okay. Now he's not saying word, but now you know that he's not in the good zones of regulation. So maybe there are things that uh, you want to uh, prompt with the students. Okay. Another way is uh, this one, the glitter bottle. So you know that when you have a bottle and you have the glitter in, so now if the glitter is all under at the bottom, it means come thinking, okay? So you just want to tell them uh, and make a very um, concrete explanation how they might be feeling, okay? Because they cannot see their feelings. So you are helping them to see with your examples uh, using that uh, glitter bottle. So when all of the things are at the bottom, it means your thinking are come. You are in the green zone. That's wonderful. Now, let's see the students are getting mad or very angry, you know. So, so the glitters will be all over the place in the bottle. So now that is red, that is yellow, that is mixed up thinking. Okay, we are going to wait. You can cry and whatsoever you want to do. And then we are going to wait until all of the glitter sank down okay so when the glitter sand down you should be calm again all right so that is another strategy that you can use okay otherwise if you want to teach your students about feelings and emotions you can use the parachute the parachute is great okay so when you use the parachute i'm just going to use a paper because i don't have the parachute okay do i have a piece of paper here yep i do have a piece of paper Okay, let's see. I have a piece of paper here. So this is uh, calm. All right. But when we do fast, so it means that I'm very angry. I'm very mad. So how fast and how slow you move the parachute should be, can define your emotions. So now the students are able to see their feelings, but in a much more concrete way. Okay. It's no longer abstract. Okay. All right. Uh, no time for this but I will give you the link later on. Actually, I want to do a scavenger hunt game, but we don't have time for that. So you can do this game with your students. It's a game where you have a list of items. So I need you to look for a toothbrush, for comb, for water bottle, and you give time. You set the time for your students to look for it. And then whoever comes back to the screen and with all the items, they win the, uh, they win the game, or, okay? So I think this would be a great example uh, game as well for you uh, who are doing online teaching. All right. So I guess that's all from me for today. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm taking a bit of time. Um, let's see. I need to stop sharing. Okay. A bit rush at the end. Uh, just going to... Once Sohaila, can I take a little bit of time to answer questions? Yes, sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure, madam. Okay. Take your time. Right. Okay. I'm just worried because these people are going to have their lunch and I cannot steal that time from them. All right. All right. All right. See, see, see. Okay. If you have any questions, you can just turn on your mic. Meanwhile, I will check your chat box. Mm -hmm. Sorry. There's a question here, Madam Afini. Can mm -hmm. you explain physical prompt by teacher Baizura? Oh. Can you explain physical prompt? Mm, okay. So one form of physical prompt is... Uh, Okay, I'm just going to share screen share. Let's see. Okay, there we go. So as you can see here, this is facts. Okay, and in this example, they use a physical prompter. So the physical prompter here is the father. Okay, this is the clinician and behind is the father. Because the child is not handing over the card to the therapist. So the father helps by giving physical prompt. So directly touch the student, 
and give the cut to uh, to the therapy. Okay, so this is physical prom. I hope that answers your question. I went, Can you please I went share to... about the DSM five book? What is the content? Ah, DSM five book yeah. is a book for diagnostic criteria. Okay. I wouldn't recommend teachers to buy it because it's very complex and teachers might use it. Um, you might use, use it wrongly because you don't have the guidance from psychologists. I use this because I have guidance from psychologists. Okay. My concern if teachers have this is that you will start diagnosing people. <laughs> because we have a lot of teachers. Okay. Because even I myself, I'm a therapist. I cannot diagnose. I don't have the power to diagnose. The power to diagnose is only for um, uh, child developmental specialists, psychiatrists, and clinical psychologists. Okay, so I only can give impressions like this child is having characteristics and stuff. So what complaints I've been listening and uh, receiving from from a lot of people is that maybe some teachers, yeah, they actually want to say that the child is showing characteristics of dyslexia. But then they come to us and uh, the parents come to us and say, the teachers uh, said that my child is dyslexic. So already stamping, already giving label, no, no assessment, nothing, and then suddenly label. Okay, this is a serious matter. Yeah. So my worry with this DSM-5 is if you have this book, later on you will try to look for this because over here is only characteristics. Okay, it's not an assessment. So later on you guys will probably start to look at the characteristics and start stamping your students, okay? Uh, but if you can promise yourself to, to behave not to stamp your students, okay, you really want to learn it for good purposes, you can look for this in Shopee. It's online. This is the mini version. The complete version is 970 pages. That's very thick, okay? So this, this is worth of 40 ringgit. Uploading it Malaysia. Not sure how do I convert that into other currency. Okay, so I leave the final judgment to you. Okay, but be mindful when you use this. Okay, all right. Okay, madam. Uh, I have a question from Puan Juliana, but I want to answer later because it was regarding the action plan. And it's from Puan Hayati. Can you please suggest is it possible to carry out lesson plan as in the IEP for a class with six ASD? One CP, two medical seizure and epilepsy. Mm, okay. Okay. I am so sorry, teacher, but what you need to do over here is multitasking. It would be a very difficult job to you. I'm, I'm well aware of that because I've been in that situation. So you have to choose whatever goals that is very functional and very small functional goals um, that you can achieve. For example, you don't want to say like, for the ASD students to score 100 in mathematics, for the ASD students to, uh, to be in the inclusive education, like for uh, in all subjects, that will be a very huge goal. Rather, if the student is very low function, I would target very small goals, like to request to go to the toilet. Okay, so maybe uh, ASD1 request to the toilet. So I only have one picture to work with him, right? So that will be okay, you know, have that one picture requesting to the toilet and he needs to point every time he needs to go to the toilet. And then gradually, I would assume that he will be able to be more independent and he will just point the picture himself. I don't have to give him direct prompts whatsoever to request to go to the toilet. Okay, so maybe another ASD is request as well, but for food. Okay, so maybe another ASD student is uh, showing bad tantrum. So maybe you want to extend the behavior. So you want to ignore, or maybe you want to give more waiting time or something like that. Uh, so medical seizures, yes. Uh, well, it really depends actually. Yeah? So you have to be smart in choosing um, how you want to approach the IEP. I don't have yes and uh, uh, wrong and right answer for that, okay? But with regards to medical with seizures and epilepsy, I would expect the students would have fluctuations yeah, in terms of their progress. Because my students with epilepsy, they progress and then the period when they have the epilepsy, they go back to square one. 
Okay, so that's the importance for the teachers and all educators, therapists to be aware of the developmental milestones, the brain functions and stuff, so that you have the right expectations. With these right expectations, when your IEP doesn't work, you can always justify to the parents. Okay, this doesn't work because da 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 da. Okay, now you can go free, okay, you can feel free uh, that you are not at fault of not carrying out the IEP. But actually, there are other things that you can't control yourself. There are other factors you can't control yourself. Okay. Yep. Madam, yes. can we take one last question? Yes, yes. One last question. Okay, so from Madam Rev Rev Rose, do you have sample IEP with data already, ma'am, just for reference or can get ideas? Do you okay. have some IEP? Okay, I would recommend you with the IEP samples. Uh, I don't have a specific IEP samples though, but there are a lot of samples online which you can trace. Okay, because mine will be in a different I do intervention plans actually, and that will be different, I guess, in a way. Uh, and my data will be very different. Actually, uh, during the presentation, I've given you guys some of the ways how you might fill up the data. So do look back to my slides and that will give you a little bit more ideas okay otherwise you can google and try to see uh, look at the youtube of early autism project malaysia okay i think they have some great documentations there that will give you a little bit more ideas of how you can approach the the data part okay i hope that helps that's all everyone thank you Thank you.